What's up, everyone? Welcome to BJJ and Brews. Remember, like, subscribe, share. We are at BJJ and Brews on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Today's episode is titled The Hangover, and I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, Chris, I don't know how long this is going to last, man. It's all right. We, we'll keep it. We'll, we'll do some shorts, some BJJ and Bruce shorts, right? <laughs> Jesus. The little, the, not a tall boy, just a little. So what were you about to ask me? So uh, you get you a little sweat in, get, sweat that off a little? Yeah, and people said they could smell the alcohol coming out of my pores. Could they really? Yeah, it was bad. How much, how much, like suppose do you, how many total, if you were to equate it to units of shots? I, I'm embarrassed to say. Really? It was bad. Dude, it was e- Eli. Eli is like... I don't understand what... I don't... Okay, you're using a context that's like, it's Eli. What does that mean? I think it's like Marine Corps binge drinking. Really? Like, just... I'm surprised at some point, like, one of y'all just doesn't, like, pass out. Well, I think his tolerance is so good. I, I just... I just... My body reacted like alcohol poisoning, and I was... Oh, really? Just, I was just puking for an hour before... Did you really? Oh, yeah, it was bad. Do you feel so... Like, at that point, like... I was still conscious, but I was just like, all right, this sucks. My body's just taking over and doing what it has to do to... And straight peeking. Yeah. Is that pulling an Eli, I guess, right? With Eli didn't idea. get drunk. Apparently, there are photos of him. I mean, Victor got sent a video. I sent him a video this morning. He had already seen the video last night. So people were, were active in sharing nice. my debauchery. And then the other How many thing balls was, got put on your forehead? Huh? How many balls got put on your forehead? I don't know. <laughs> At least my eyebrows didn't get shaved, but <laughs> I, I, I woke up and there were all these text messages from people because I guess I fucking drunk texted and drunk called like a bunch of people. Oh boy. Like I was checking in. I'm like, are you guys going to, are you going to train jujitsu? Are you going to train? Like you got to come back <laughs> like, to the gym and train. So, gym. okay. So like they say like I'm fucking HRing when you, when you drink, right? Like it's supposed to take away your inhibitions. <laughs> so like the purest form of Noah is making sure people make it to class tomorrow yeah, there you go <laughs> like that's the most well, embarrassing tomorrow, thing you can do but just like yeah not tomorrow per se but get and people it, get people in there okay no, I, well, we won't go to the embarrassing things so how do you reconcile this because you tend to be an incredibly like healthy person yeah how do you reconcile debauchery is I mean, it, just, it was a moment of, honestly, in, in my head, it's kind of like a moment of weakness and I'm putting poison in my body. Really? Oh, yeah. Do you, I mean, so aside from just the occasional moments of weakness, how, but the only reason I how got often do you this, actually drink? Uh, I don't. You really? No, I don't really. Like, I'll, I'll drink, I'll drink a couple socially and that's I it. I mean, like, like, yeah, even like, at dinner, like, at no, night no, or no I don't drink alcohol. Really? No, I don't have alcohol at home in my house. What's I that? cook with wine. I don't, I don't have alcohol in my house. Oh, really? I cook with wine. That's it. I don't. So that that's why I had to steal a spritzer from well, your the roommate. Thing, yeah. So I don't have. I, I have a terrible. I don't have any tolerance, which is a good thing. But you know, well, the only reason I. I got totally shit faced is because uh, I was in such good company. And and one thing that I was taught at a very young age was uh, never drink with strangers, or never get drunk with strangers. You know, and I've always kind of lived by that. And you know. I was with Paul, Mike, and Eli, and I, I fucking grapple with those guys every day. I've been grappling for the last uh, year and a years. To I'm be very, young. I'm very, you know, so I'm, you know, I know those guys. I, I'm safe. And I was at Paul's place, so I was, you know, I was in a safe place. And, and really what it was is I think I, I, I almost get competitive, and I just grab a bottle <laughs> of whiskey, and I started chugging that. And I Did think you that, approach it from a systematic way? Like, how did you... Did you like, all right, I'm going to have one drink and a glass of water or whatever the case is? No, I, I didn't. No, the problem was everything closed at 10 last night. Oh, because, because Orlando's curfew, under right? curfew, yeah. Is that shit still going on? It was a curfew last night. Okay. So they were closing everything. And that extends all the way to Waterford? Like, yeah, really? which is what was which we thought was slightly unreasonable. That's very unreasonable. But anyway, the... Uh, so Eli's Even though rush, bars are open. Eli's rushing to order drinks while things are open and he was so disappointed that things got closed we ended up going to don julio's they were the ones that stayed open the latest <laughs> and they serve margaritas that look like fucking pitchers they're huge oh it's like the monster fucking, the, the fishbowl ones yeah the nice. monster el monstro el, el monstro el monstro yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was bad man really so and then eli loves the fucking ordering shots for the table so he just orders shots, and they're just. So shots what you're saying is, if I want a free drink, I need to, sh- I need to go to the UFC with y'all tonight. Yeah, but it's not. Oh, I'm not doing. It. You're not. You're not see- Dude, after I record this podcast, I'm hibernating for a day and a half. You will not see me. 
Really? I, I was planning to do stuff anyway, but now it's straight hibernation. Blinds closed, liquids around, sleep. I was planning to rest a lot yesterday because I've been training hard this week. So and that, that goes to my commi- the, my, my, uh, our little mini conversation yesterday. You made a commitment and you showed up today. Oh, yeah. Even though I'm sober, well, not so much anymore. Yeah. I am well, fasted. You're just gonna, yeah, you're going to get that red face and I'm still going to be sweating out. Do you, do you out get the... Um, so how did you... Okay, did you notice a distinct difference in performance today in jiu-jitsu? I don't know. I, I'll tell you one thing. My brain was out of it. There was no thought. Talk about being, you, you talk about being present. Purely like you, you instinct? T- you know, dude, I was fucking doing the technique better than Victor. Victor was brain farting all over the place. Man, so maybe there's something to that. Is it, is it that like, so is the brain in the way when we're practicing and Depending executing? on the person, sure. But I wouldn't say I was performing better. No. I, but I didn't go with, I mean. We did pretty pojada today. I made, I made sure to make it pojada. So. Yeah, I'm still kind of tipsy, so I'm just kind of like... I'm Are you just, really? Just, Are you oh, s- you're still, you're I, still... I still think I'm tipsy, yeah. Because I haven't gotten a headache yet. The headache oh, comes the withdrawal, when, when I right? sober up. I, I haven't hit that yet. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm still... I still do have you, like do a I need high. to drive you home? Huh? Do I need to drive you home? No, we're good. We're good. Yes, I'm going to. Yes, you, you're going to drive me home. Okay. No, I'm just going to sleep here until I sober okay, up. Okay, well, that works too. There you go. Do you need me to get some food? About the no, I, the thought of food it sickens me too. Right really? Now. Oh, yeah, no. I, I'm. Did you not eat? This is all on an empty stomach? What? Just like training? You, yeah, no, yeah. no, last night. No, I ate and I fucking upchucked what I had oh, for dinner. Oh, well then. From, the, yeah. from that film. You really dated yourself by using the word upchuck, by the way. Oh, that's, really? Yeah, there that's a. But. So, yeah, man. I, I finally uh, had a hangover roll. This will be titled The Hangover. Did, when, it was, is this, so when was the last time you had a hangover? Oh, months ago. Really? I don't, I don't like, I, I don't. Like I, I, I've, I mean, yeah. There's a certain inhibition that goes away, that goes when you drink. There, that's undoubted. But I try to release and have fun without needing that chemical aid to do so. You would, and I just feel better. I hate, like I did this. So I lived in, I lived in Europe for two years, and my first year in particular, I was working four days a week, and me and all these other guys, we'd go out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And out in Europe, things start to, especially in Spain, things start to happen at three or four. In the afternoon? No, no, no. At night. Three in the, like, when you talk about in the going morning? out at night, it's like. That's when I'm you waking go out, up. You go out, to, you take a nap at nine at night, you wake up at 11, you start getting ready and you get to the club by one thirty-two. That's how late the nights are. So I was, I was regularly coming home at like seven or eight in the morning and it's fun for a little bit, but I just didn't like losing the entire next day, which is why I'm... So I'm there is the associated, like, consequence oh, yeah. with that. Like, I was, I, I picture, like, the, it, there's this weird, like, image in my head of, like, sort of, like, European, like, more, like, sophisticated... And like they just sort of like handle things better, and well, I think they do handle things. You don't see in the sense that you don't see like messy drunk people nearly really? as much. Oh God! Like people talk about like St. Patrick's Day in New York or Boston being yeah, a total or shit Savannah, show. Georgia. You know, it's, yeah. Anyway, it's a shit show. Um, I think the fact that uh, drinking is not a taboo for young people, sure. So people start t- drinking, you know, in their teens, and they learn how to manage their tolerance. They know what their tolerance is, and there's no pressure on them to just cram it in because I'm breaking the law anyway. I might as well just I'm get it done. Breaking the law. Yeah. And what, Let you me know. get that four loco. Yeah. Right? Like, so they they just you know I think in that respect, I'm not saying people don't do stupid things, but you see a lot less public displays of drunkenness. I mean, they have a good time. Yeah. But you don't see that messiness hmm. so much. In my experience, at least. In your experience, in in España. In España, sí, si, señor. Uh, what um, so how how did I do today? Um, I mean, I was I wasn't paying too. Much. I was kind of on autopilot. Were you really? In terms, yeah, I was kind of on autopilot. I mean, I, I didn't move when you were doing the technique, and I literally was just staring <laughs> at you and Mark's back, so I had no view of <laughs> what really? you were teaching. So I was just. Saying, this is the most unnoa I've ever met you. Yeah, I know it was it was bad, but it, it was um. You know, you teach a good class. You have your style of teaching. You, you're going to be very uh, detail-oriented. You're going to talk about principles. 
I appreciate that. You know, and um, I appreciate that. And I I think it's always good to have different people teach the same thing because certain instructors are going to resonate with students differently. So you might have two different people teaching the same technique, but the the second instructor connects with one student, not connects, but just the technique registers in the student's head because of how that instructor phrased it or what how they related to it. I think teaching is finding finding common ground to relate to the students so you can speak in their language and their vocabulary while describing the thing and concept you're trying to describe. It's pretty good. Dude, that's I feel, pre- like, pretty, I feel uh, like, you know, what that's was, pretty that, zen uh, of you. was that uh, old school where they did the debate and, and Will Farrell just is like out of it and then all of a sudden he just goes into a trance and like launches into the, like the most perfect debate like oratory. He goes against like heavy. I haven't like, seen. I've seen old school one time. Okay, what's that guy's name? Carville, that southern, the guy from Louisiana. He's a, he's a he's a liberal that's on, uh, you know, CNN and those things a lot. James Carville, I think. I don't. I don't the Raging know. Cajun. Anyway, he was more popular back then okay. in the in the early two thousands. But he was like they brought in this ringer, so he's the ringer to debate. Okay. The the lovable losers and Will Farrell comes up there, and just trances into this long spiel and Carville says I got no rebuttal that was perfect and then he's like I blacked out what happened that's, <laughs> like, exact, that's exactly what's happening to me right now I'm is just, it, I'm is just it on bad? autopilot and then you're like oh that was pretty insightful and I'm like really I don't know what <laughs> like, so what is what is going to be your uh, your hangover meal when you wake up out of this trance <sighs> probably a burrito a mojito a, bo- a burrito oh burrito <laughs> I was like <laughs> what is the, the hair the ultimate hair of the dog or? yeah no. well that, that probably would help but what kind of burrito from where no I, I'd make the burrito like? I would actually cook and make the burrito you would make a bur- you make burritos at home I make breakfast burritos now every for breakfast but I I, I meal prep it so I have the filling and then okay. I, and I just fill it up so I what's do your, what's your meal prep do you do you like spend Sunday and then you just prep for the rest of the week Saturday Sunday yeah really shopping and, for the and rest of the week if I'm if I'm good, then it will last me the rest of the week. If not, you, by Wednesday, Thursday, I have to start. Did you adopt that from the sort of like bodybuilding thing, or where did where did you get that meal prepping for the week thing from? I mean, I just use the word meal prepping because that's what that's the vocabulary people use nowadays. But I've been doing that for years because I just don't have enough. T- I like to cook. I just have learned to cook big meals because I don't have the time to. And, and you're also cook. one person, right? Like it's yeah, it's that hard also to cook helps. And and I also. I have an, a, a, I guess, a, I guess compared to most people, a weird tolerance for eating cold food. Ugh. You know, like yeah, I don't I'm, mind I'm, pulling something out of the refri- fridge and just eating it. Whereas most people, normally they just serve hot. So, for example, yeah. like, like, um, a, breakfast like a chicken stir hot? fry, like a chicken stir fry. Yeah. yeah, I'll have it the day I cook it, but then I'll put it in, I'll put it away. And then when I want to eat it, I'll just take some of that out and, and it's refrigerator temperature. And oh, I negative, and I don't, bro. And I, it doesn't bother me at all, which is, I, and I know that. So and do you I've eat for enjoyment people, or do you eat for pure, like, sustenance and this is just, like, what do you, what do you eat for? Do you eat I think as, you can as do a both. means to I an end? I think you can do both. Can you? Do you? Th- I mean, like, oh, when yeah. I hear you eating well, cold okay, stir fry, okay, that sounds okay. disgusting. Well, here's the thing. I was, I was blessed to be raised by, par- in my opinion, I was blessed to have formed good uh, nutritional habits or better than average nutritional sure. habits as a kid. So I did not develop um, a taste for shitty foods. Define shitty foods. Greasy. Uh, Empty battered, calories. Fast food kind of stuff. And really ice cream, although I did eat my fair share of ice cream as a kid, but for whatever reason, as I got older, my sweet tooth went away and now I find fruit sweet, you know? Yeah. Like, I I, I don't know if you noticed, but I I posted like the last few days, I I posted, well, during the week, I posted on Instagram what looked like whipped cream and fruit. Like I had berries. What was that like? It was Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's dessert for me. So, um, for me, uh, I think you can cook good things. I don't. I don't do copious amounts of butter. You know, I'm, so you're, not, you're, I'm not like a French cook. I'm more of a Mediterranean olive oil. Everything starts with olive oil, onions, garlic, and sometimes ginger if I'm going Asian slant. That's the base that's for good, most. That's a good and, base. 
Yeah, so I'll ha- and I've gotten to breakfast burritos, and for me, breakfast burritos are um, potato and scrambled eggs. So you're not you're not a keto guy. No, no, no. I carb the fuck out of myself. Really? I, oh yeah, carbs, carbs, carbs. So I'll do um, potato and scrambled eggs. That's one filling, and then some kind of ground meat. Papas y huevos. Yeah, it's kind of basically yeah, papas y huevos. And then either Any chorizo in there. Ground, Come on, man. Get, yeah, no, chorizo. either either ground either um, chorizo meat. Really? Or ground beef. Okay. And then and you'll eat that shit cold. Yeah, I will. Oh. And then the go-to, this is the thing you need. I have this uh, cilantro sriracha sauce that I buy from Sprouts. I was like, that sounds like, like that a specialty is, store. That you just like dab that on as you're eating it. just makes all the difference in the world. Well, I appreciate this a lot. The, the uh, sriracha, excuse me, from my Oh, yeah, dude. My, so I, I have heritage. three different types of sriracha at my house. The, the there's only one. There's only I one. I have that sriracha, and then I have other people's recipes of sriracha. Which right. they taste different. That's why I like them. Then it's not sriracha, is it? It's that other person's hot sauce. Well, yes. Done in the style of sriracha. There you go. All right. How was training this week? Training this week was great. Um, it's been a good flow. Uh, I'm working half guard. I'm committing to to just pulling half guard. Pulling half guard? Like straight up? Just right oh, off the bat. Just, Boom. Just fucking force my way into half guard clumsily and... And try and figure out, figure it out, learn it. What have you been playing with so far in half guard? What um, have you seen good openings? The tight to? waist series. Okay. So I'm playing with the underhook, um, and so it started with doing the back take from reverse half. So when they actually, when you get their arm over, so you're basically yeah, yeah, yeah. on each other's backs. Yeah, you have that like the essentially yeah. 50 50 yeah, position, right? Yeah, like, and taking the back from there and I did that a while ago and that came up again of me doing that so I was like well let me kind of work with that what do you find you like why is that happening like what is it that you're you're using a lot of people a tend to go to reverse half to pass and I yeah. can very easily whether they do it or not get my head past their arm so now I'm on their back and they're on mine they don't cross face me Okay, so that's a failure, right? Like, so that's yeah, I'd say it's a failure on that. That's part. an interesting thing because, like, I know a lot of times that like that reverse half position where they're sitting out on their their far side hip, like they tend to try to like far head cover, right? Like they're not cross facing. So you're finding a lot of people don't cross face you from when they're sitting out. Well, no, and you guys not, now I'm going and, I, and I'm and I'm learning that the key thing is I need to protect my head. Okay. Because I'm getting cross-faced a lot. Oh, you are getting cross-faced. Okay, now right. I am, yeah. Because I'm playing that. Now that I'm playing it more, mm-hmm. you know. So. I have to ask. I forgot to. I saw you posted a picture of it. Where the fuck did that black eye come from? What? Where the fuck did your black eye come from? Oh, the black eye? Uh, I, was, <laughs> I rolled with Cap last week. Yeah? What did like he hit you with? Saturday. I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember afterwards I had a bump on my eye. And that turned into a black eye. It's looking legit. You should just lie and say you did Muay Thai. Yeah, it keeps getting... It, what's crazy is it moved from the corner. Like, the well, bump was in the corner, gravity. and then it slid around. And I keep putting my cream that takes away... Uh, ah, is it working? Is no, that homeopathic? Well, it keep, it keep, yeah, it keeps sliding away. I think the thing would have been totally black, though. But you, you We have, have to do a controlled yeah, study. Yeah, I know. I have to punch you in your other eye, yeah, and we'll, and then we'll we figure that. that out. So it is what it is. How fun is it rolling with Cap? It was good. I hadn't rolled. I, I, you know, I hope he, I hope he, you know, becomes a regular. I know he's got a job now doing contract work. Like I think he's like a contractor manager sort of thing. Okay. So I don't know what his schedule permits, but you know, now is he a good grappler? He's a cool dude. He's a fun guy to have around. Super nice so guy. Yeah. It's fun to grapple. We did nogi, and you know, and whenever you roll with a guy like that, he's you know, very like good at nogi. Yeah, well, you know, whenever you roll with a guy like that, I always like to say you want to. You're trying to at least in my my head, I'm trying to roll to impress. So that means be you know. Hard intensity, but being as technical as possible and show what I can do and and see where the chips will lie in terms of what, what that person is going to let me do. <laughs> you know, how much they're going to work with me, you know. I also rolled with Zach, or, you know, and Zach just fucking completely mauled me. Yeah, that's, that was bad. That's a terrible feeling. Isn't that was, like, and, and, you know, the motherfucker actually, like, I tried my late armbar escape with him and he fucking just armbarred the shit out of me and he did not let me do what I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to turn my, my... I basically wanted to do something funky and turn my wrist a certain way. He locked my wrist in place. And afterwards, I asked him, like, I was trying to do something funky. And he was like, 
Yeah, he's like, you were kind of dangling it there. So I was like, oh, he's, he's going to do <laughs> like, something. So I switched my grip to a, a grip that I feel very comfortable and secure. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, there you go. Black belt experience right there. <laughs> he's also like, he's... I know that's his go-to. He mount, he like passes your guard, mounted yeah, armbar. He's also that's very, his go-to. Like he's, he's very good at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's very, very good at that. Um, so we got a new logo. Thank you for taking care of that. Oh yeah, let's get let's get some feedback about the logo. I think it's great. Um, I'm happy how it came it came out. Yeah. It turned out great, and it's funny because like, so creatively, there were some like interesting things. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't classify myself as a, as a particularly creative person, right? I'm fa- I'm fairly left brain, systems based, process based, and like the the way, I'll just admit, you came about getting to that logo was interesting. Like working with a person who, who is, that's their job is to be a creative, a creative person and stuff. I mean like their ideas versus what our ideas. We'll have to, are we allowed to like post the prototypes at some point? I'm sure we, I have to find them. I got some feedback. I mean, I've got them on my computer. Yeah. So, um, Oh yeah. They're in the email. Yeah. The, um, I, th- I think it ended up good. I like it. I like, I like it too. I like yeah. It. It, it, you know, it took some time and, you got to learn how to work with, um, with a you know with a graphics designer and and I was trying to figure out you know I, that was the thing I asked at the beginning like what's the best way to work with you how can I be your best client and communicate with you the way you like to be communicated with and yeah. for me um, I think we probably could have given a little more direction at the beginning I think so too you know but because once once you once you did it was like like yeah that, you know? but I I you know. I think at the end of the day, oh. at the end of the day, I think um, what what made this guy good, and his name's Christian, and he's a friend of Mike Mike Sahibi, is that uh, which is that's who referred us was Mike. So the nice thing about Christian was he was very uh, open to iterating and listening to feedback, and you know I've heard horror stories of people they're like contractually like every time you it's like almost like a lawyer like every time you send me something like send me revisions to do yeah. that's another i want to charge you more you yeah know? it's just your billing hours yeah right? just billing hours or i'm saying or if we do a contract up front there are only four or ten, like there's a set limit of edits you know what i mean so it's like we follow this process and you better we better land at the finish line or else you're going to pay more money or right, we're done, right, right. you know sort of thing so and that he was not that way no, I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he was just like, yeah, yeah, keep, you know. He, he wanted to help us out. Yeah, right? and even after he sent the final stuff, I, I actually wanted a couple more formats, and he, you know, after the final payment. I think it ended stuff. up well. Like, there was, oh, yeah. like, I will say I got a lot of feedback from the initial one. From the and what? The initial logo. Oh, um, our the, one? The yellow one. The yellow one. Oh, yeah. The yellow one. It was it was all birthday candles on the table. Yeah, or, or a cake. Or a cake. It was it the, like a lot a of it was yeah, that, it was, so. It was interesting. I think it, it it didn't convey jujitsu as much as as much as the one. But does like you now. said, once we started coming up with some creative and some direction, yeah, I think uh, he was able to capture kind of what we we're looking for in terms. It's of funny because like you had what you had sent him the the four hands essentially with the yeah. This I had this belt. idea of like making it maybe more like two halves, and it wasn't around. It was more more oblong. Yeah, and like a shield half, the, almost. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. So the top half were two people cheering their glass in the bottom no excuse me the top half would be the fist bump the bottom half would be two people clinking glasses and then it sounded good on paper and even at first glance i was like yeah and then when i looked at it some more and he did a mock a lot of hands it was a lot of hands a lot of hands so you know tried to simplify but so so like so it's interesting that you did communicate that because like you had sent me one originally and i thought about it and stuff and i i i was like it hit me as i was driving so actually i was texting while driving which i shouldn't do you um, weren't. You were dictating, right? That's Chris? true. Yeah, I do text to talk or text to t- or talk to text, um, which is pro- you could probably pick that up from the terrible like. Oh yeah. Yeah, like the the really really bad uh, grammatical like. However, the hell Google Translate takes my voice, but um. But so we thought of that sort of like independently from your initial mm-hmm. shield. So I'm glad that it, it worked out the way it is. So I, I, everybody, feedback from about our logo because that's that's oh, it yeah, now bring moving it forward. forward. And we're and we're. we're well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep. We'll keep more surprises. We're not going to change the logo. No, we're it, not. Gonna it change. is. It is what it is, right? No, I know. But where that logo could be found, we might be putting. Oh, that's out more true. Things. That's true. That's, 
just leave it at that. Yeah. So how was your week of jujitsu? My week of jujitsu was good. So I was able to make it. I'm going to have to modify my schedule now. And I'm going to work on Stacy a little bit to try to get me here that extra day. I think will make a difference. Yeah. Three days in the after, three afternoons. Three, three, three jujitsu classes where I'm not the one responsible for teaching. Correct. That's, that's the, the, how are the two morning classes? Two morning classes are great, man. Like I'm, I think, I think COVID did me a favor. Um, as you know, I'm like, I'm not a big super like ego guy. Like it's a super what eco? ego oh, guy. Ego, so yeah. like, you know, like with three black belts in the mat with Kali, me and Tommy, it gets real like weird as to who's teaching what and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and there's no ego involved between the three of us. We're all good friends and stuff. But like when I can just take direction, teach the class how I want to teach it, I think it tends to flow better. Um, too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many cooks in the kitchen, exactly. So, like, I think it, it works out well. But it, I think it's a better experience overall for the students. Sure. Um, so the morning class has been good. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually kind of, I, was gonna, I guess I, I could say pleasantly surprised, but I want to say impressed with the number of students that I know from the afternoons that are white belts. Who are showing, up, are at showing up at 6 in the morning. A.M. And I'm like, dang. That's awesome, man. You know, like, yeah. I mean, and, and we've got Victoria who's been training for, what, a couple months? all total yeah exactly like in terms of cumulative yeah like like subtract out covid right like and damn dude she's fucking in the morning at 6 a.m and man she's you know and it's like it's like jeez and she's good she's a good student she learns really well Um, well she she did what what we talked about which was she actually tried to do techniques yeah i rolled it through she tried to do techniques that she's learned in class so yeah her 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 toolbox might not have many things in it, but she's actually using but she's what trying, she has. Yeah, she's, instead of just flailing, I mean, like, she's honestly, actually doing like, what she did. Honestly, I can did. watch her kind of like funneling and stuff, right? Like when I first met her, I'm like, she probably had been like one week into jujitsu or something, right? And she's trying like hip bump sweeps and stuff. And she's trying like mechanically to like feed to that position. Mm-hmm. Like she's like, okay, his arm needs to be here in order for me to like, you know, put my armpit over his cross arm and stuff. I'm like, man, like, She's, I think, be, uh, and I don't know how much this comes from her, I guess, playing volleyball is oh, like the she idea. she played volleyball? Yeah, she played like oh, competitive volleyball. So that's, I mean, my, I'm paraphrasing. Go. So, but my like, experience. Th- from my understanding, that's what she's, she's done. So she already has uh, a little bit of like athletic has, intelligence and, yeah, and like a way of like learning athletically. So like, like, she's like, okay, I need to, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do what the hell I can to, to make yeah. it happen. Right. So like she was doing that then. I'm like that's awesome, you know. Like, and she'd be, she'd be, uh, and she's doing that now at, in the morning classes too. Oh, she so. did, she did an over under pass. She over under passed me beautifully, which was last week's yeah. uh, curriculum. So, so How she's going to be wing sweeping people now. I know. She'll be like, like the only person doing wing sweeps. You know, like what? <laughs> yeah, it's a. So, what do you think about the wing sweep? It's a, it's a weird sweep, right? I, it's a, it, it, it's, uh, it feels. It's definitely unlike other sweeps I felt. Right. But I think it's. It's part of a good system if you want to because play it's that going game. in the like the reverse direction, like, yeah. and that's where. But it's a cool system because you can do, you know, you can do arm drags, and yeah. You can do a lot of. Again, dude, that fucking cross. That cross, cross lead, lead, man. man. Cross that's lead a, is. I think that's even the new thing in jujitsu. Yeah, right. That's the new hotness cross. Now lead. that now that Hodger Gracie has blessed it with, this is the way to do arm bars and sweeps. <laughs> I think there's a lot that can come off of that. I, I mean, did, hell, man. Didn't like Chris Howder also like? Yeah, he, he did. was. He was. He like showed a grip to. He kept. Sh- he kept a, like a cross collar, or excuse me, a cross, cross sleeve, sleeve grip yeah. for a scissor sweep as well. I think so. And actually, I think Danaher was showing some of the cross sleeve grip that like that too. To because what is? I mean, like if you're really locked on that elbow, man, like their arms extend, they're not getting it back, oh, yeah. right? Like so, it's like it's a really good. I like that system, so I'm gonna play with that a little bit more too. Especially like I'm, like everything that I play off of is off of the scissor sweep anyway. So it'd be a good thing to play with, because like traditionally the wings or the wing sweep is taught off of the traditional um, scissor sweep too. So like, when you do that, and you get the scissor position with the you're you're attacking to their. But open you're pulling side. with the collar instead of like wrapping all the way around to their. You're pulling not pulling with the collar, but like you have to free your arm, right? So like you have oh. the same side sleeve grip, yeah. collar grip, it fails. You have to free your arm, reach around to the back to the belt, and like pull them that way. Um, 
that's just an extra step, right? Versus mm-hmm. using what's available to you to there. So that, that's a cool little system. Like I, I'm going to play with this one a lot. I think I can, yeah. I like this one. Yeah. And it's something as what does Danaher say? It's like, if you want to get better, find new things that can fit into what you already do. Like instead your of sort of like frame yeah, of reference. Yeah. Right? Don't like add to your current system. Don't learn a new system. And your system is, let me be on my back and scoot in. Not today. Not, uh, Not today. Ask Mark. You'll have to ask Mark. Oh, okay. I scrambled today. Oh, you sc- We yeah. scrambled. I'm, I'm Mark verbatim. No, we had a hell of a round. There we go. You know why? Because Chris wouldn't fall to his back. Oh, my goodness. So that should be the new rule. Chris, what? you can't you can't pull guard. You know what I was thinking about, right? Like, and it's a video that you sent me, and it was from oh yeah, it was Globe Yeah, and it's Christian. like you can't be on your back. Yeah, or what is it? Or, or I mean, it's basically yeah. wrestling in the jujitsu context. Basically, yeah. So like, I'm gonna, and that's one of those things, right? Like, we get sort of like seduced, I guess, if you want to use that term, with being on our backs and playing guard and stuff. And that's one of the things. Like, I'll just fall back, but like, what are the three S's from guard? Submit, sweep, or stand up. And I always sort of forget, like, hey. Stand up, right? And uh, I was, and, and that's one of those things I think people who roll with me a lot forget that you can do, especially with me, because like I always try to go for some bullshit, like scissor sweep or butterfly or something. It's like I was just, each time I would just stand up and base and just like drive forward with my collar today, and I was just driving people straight back and basically getting that three points. Or three, two, two points? You, you what is felt it, two? That, you felt that strength from all the working out, the heavy singles. You the heavy doing. singles. I've actually been backing off of that. Oh, really? Yeah. But I'm going to get back to it. So I did five by five yesterday. So. Oh, well, yeah. No, no big deal. Just I mean, 405. It's, low, low, low key 405. No, I did, no, I did five by five yesterday. Oh, five by five. Five by five. five. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm at 365. So next week I'm going to go for 375. Dude, I started working out at this gym. Crunch. Well, I told you that last yeah, week. But it's, the it's, club. It's, yeah, the club. It's not a gym. It's a club. It's a club. Let's, let's, let's clarify. They, yo, they play, yeah, we've already talked about that. But I'm doing squats, and I have no squat strength. I, 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 I don't know if it's because I didn't squat much. Like, that's one movement I never did. But, like. Why is that? Because, like, I see you sitting there and doing a goblet squat all the time. I know, but I just don't. I, I think it's technique. I think it's a, it's. It's my, I don't know what to recruit. Like, I think it's, it's just a lot of inexperience. So I struggle with 135. No, you don't. I mean, I do it, but I mean, I, I, I'm sweating to do it. So, I mean, I was doing my, my fucking squats, 135, you know, sets of 10. And I was, you know, I go deep and all that, but, you know, I'm not just boom, boom, boom. And of course, Paul you know, everyone like on either side. Oh, yeah. Is. Well, he wasn't there. It was just me. But there are people on other, you know, everyone, male, female. But they're quality out, of squat they're, matters They're out too. squatting me, and I'm just like, well, I don't know if I'm looking that good in the club right now, you know? <laughs> oh, but you are. <laughs> so you got that social pressure of like, I got to impress. Yeah, but don't, inter- don't, don't, risk the, don't, don't run know, the risk I, of injury no, I, I, you know, I, I, in lieu I, of, I do of what a good I do. squat. So. I'm hoping that that will improve. But. So where are you squatting? I, like, because Paul was giving me shit last week. I... Anytime I squat, I'm, I'm a they little bit They tell me I go all the way down. So I just, I don't know how not to. That doesn't surprise me. I, I just don't know how to stop. I feel like that's the thing. Like the weight, once the weight's on my shoulder, I go down. Like, I feel like stopping midway is almost more work. Like that's scary to me. Hmm. Okay. So I just end up just slowly lowering myself down to where I'm all the way down. And then I fucking go all the way up. Yeah. And I imagine your torso is pretty high in the process, right? Like it's pretty vertical. Yeah. I try to. Yeah. Like I'm a, but like, I, it I'm will, a hip it will bend squatter. over a little bit with, you know, if I'm struggling with the weight, I like I'll come forward slightly, you know, because my my hips. So here's will the thing back. that's interesting, right? Like, let's go back to the Marcelo Garcia thing that kind of Paul talked about. Like, do you feel it necessary? Because like you've you've come up, you do very well not squatting, right? Like you're 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 a reasonably strong person, and stuff. Like, do you feel the need to up your squat, and why? Um. You're doing all this other stuff. You're deadlifting. I've watched you deadlifting. Yeah, no, no. I, I can deadlift. I, yeah, I can definitely deadlift more. But it, the uh, so why do you feel the need to squat? Is it just to work that plane of motion? Is it to? Yeah, I think. Yeah, and I think my legs can be stronger. You know, but I don't. I think I, for me, it's more of a. I'm just. Per, I don't want to personally. The idea of putting, you know significant amount of weight on my shoulders and me squatting i don't like that image 
That's an interesting I thing. I don't like okay. that image. Like That's I, a so, very interesting but thing. But I do think my legs can be like, I don't think my, I should be struggling this much to do 135. No, I, And I mean, also, yeah. Yeah, don't do that. I just have, there's, a, there's sort of a level of like athletic curiosity and pride where I want to just do a better squat. I well, of be course, but squatter. at some point there will, you will reach a point of diminishing marginal returns, right? Yeah, so the, to the me, risk if, of danger to increases. Me, but yeah, yeah. But for me, like, I just want to be able to comfortably squat my weight, my body weight. Oh, you! Right now, I think for you, it's not a matter of strength; it's a matter of the skill of strength. I believe that. I, yeah, I, I, that's I, probably I, I, it. Like, but just, in doing so, I think it'll allow me to recruit the muscles better and probably develop the muscles better. I think. Sure. The, you know that ha- because I'll do other movements with legs, like I'll do the sled, and I'm not lagging behind so much on the sled with Eli and Paul yeah. as I would squat. So I mean, it's, it's definitely it's a, a much skill-based like, thing. It's, it's a much like grosser motor, motor pattern too of like pushing a sled versus like sure. a squat like this a squat is a really like fine i yeah. mean the, the, people say it's like a gross motor movement but it's really not like there's there's so many nuances to doing a proper squat that but like i, I think you'll you'll catch up like y- your learning curve will yeah will catch so that, up that's, that's, that's time, it's just know, a so. little like project of mine just to figure out are squatting. you enjoying your time at crunch fitness so far i enjoy i do they have any heavy bags or yeah, like grappling do. mats or anything they have they have like two patches of turf Okay. And they have, but that hit area that I thought was its own room is just in the middle of the gym. It's in the just, middle of the oh, so it's they just, like just inspire the. Yeah, but it's just an area. It's just literally an area in the gym. It's not like its own like exclusive place. So how do they keep people out of that? They don't. Anybody can use it, and there are hardly any classes. Well, hardly any classes right now. I imagine. Yeah, but if there's a class, it's just evident because everyone's there. But it doesn't mean people won't be stretching and okay. using it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Seated. It'll be, um, so it's like, yeah, it's, 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 I haven't been in a, in a gym gym in, a, in since grad school. So yeah, it's cool to see all the bros and the, you know, everyone's showing off their body parts, male and female, you know, a lot, a lot of, of uh, tank tops, a lot, lot of, of, yoga, lot of lot upper of body, a lot of skipping leg day. Is it really, is that still exist? I, oh dude, I, I, I watched, dude, I, I followed a guy out. He was fucking jacked from the waistline up. His fucking traps were fucking fucking coming up to his ears. His his fucking converse from his converse all the way up to his shorts was just like a straight little line. <laughs> That's I interesting to too God. because like blatant. I would think that there has to be some sort of like carryover sort of like I mean like if you're he if might be strong too. Like I don't think the guy doesn't do leg day. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I think most. I don't know like how much of his. I, that's the thing. I don't. I, I think you genetics don't play yeah. a role, but I don't. I, I don't study. That's what's. That's why it's nice for a change because I used to be the guy programming, even though I didn't know much about programming. I just bro. I basically did a bro split, um, but I was usually the lead when I would work out with people. Now I'm not. Which is nice. I just it's follow. Not, it's, it's good. To I turn just your follow brain it. Out, right? I don't even think about it. I just fucking go in and I do it. I don't even think about it. I don't think you know. Like what? How many? How many reps was that? Twelve. All right, and then you do twelve. <laughs> you know, and if I'm if I'm actually trying to be on the ball, I count how many, you know, the lead person did, and then I don't even have to ask them how many reps was that. That's right. literally all I'm responsible for, and I just go and I do it. It's refreshing, isn't it? Oh just yeah, turn your, great. just to just go to work. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, that's 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 what's nice about being and not looking around and like you know? well, what machine or, or place is available. You know what I mean? It's just like I get led over there. I do it. You know? Are you tracking your own progress? No, you're not. I probably should, but I don't. You don't at all? No, really. But that's also because Paul's doing the programming and Paul's doing us on, I think, four week cycles. So. Um, what they're called mesocycles or something right, yeah. I, 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 I actually heard someone use the word but it's a cycle of uh starting at a lower weight and so each week is you have your workouts are weekly and you repeat every week okay, okay. so you program for a week and then you repeat that same program for four weeks and you're upping the weight slightly each time. Sure. And then at the end of the month, you drop the weight, but you don't drop it all the way down to what you were week one of the first. So month, let, let's just do something simple. Let's say month one, week one, I'm doing a bench press and we're going to bench press at 100 pounds. Okay. Then we work up and by week four, 
I don't know what's doing. 160 or 200, I, you know, probably 160, yeah. you know. Month two. Start at Week one again. Now we're at, we start at 105 or 110 as our start weight. That's going to take a lot of discipline, I'd imagine, because like the ego in you wants to say, hey, I ended at 160. But this that's one's, the thing. You know, I'm like, not programming. I'm just following. Oh, that's true. So, okay, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great because I'm just going in and I'm just putting in the work and then I don't even have to think about was it... I'm also, because I train jiu-jitsu and I also know that uh, like hypertrophy and just training to fucking failure every day is not necessarily the best recipe. No. Not for that, being a jiu-jitsu right. athlete and even not for development just in strength and conditioning potentially. So um, I don't that in and of itself kind of has like I don't I don't need to although what well, I mean I did it yesterday with Eli we worked out and we did a push pull so we did chest and back mm -hmm. and we started with dumbbell press and yeah my ego said I want to get to I want to get to three digits on those dumbbells even though Paul and I got up to 80 I was like we're fucking getting to 100 because I want to get to 100 you know um, did you Oh yeah, okay. I felt good, man. I, that's there's the opposite. I that's I've always dumbbell press. I've always inclined dumbbell press. That's been my staple. That's a good inclined dumbbell good, press. Yeah. So when I fucking grab I bet dumbbells, you experience no shoulder pain, huh? I bet you experience no shoulder pain. No, uh, no. You know what fucked my shoulder was doing fucking heavy bench, regular what, bench press. I bet. I, yeah, man. That's what fucked my shoulder originally. Was that? You know, and if I do bench press, I'm way weaker than that. Like if you if you take a, an athlete and put them in front of a bench with me, and let's say they bench 200, and, and again I'm just well, let me use actual numbers. Like I can, I'm going to start struggling at 260, 270. Okay, someone that is at that same strength with a with bench. I don't think can do 110, 120 pound dumbbells. Probably not. I can. Like I can. I, but it's I can a skill of both, right? Like there's. That's what yeah, I. That's, that's what's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't. I'm not as good as recruiting, like synchronizing the press. Yeah. And probably recruiting my lats. You know the way. And plus, you need like to, be, people who bench press tend to cheat a lot. I mean, they they essentially turn it into a decline. I would press. be very interested, actually, in. Like, although I probably don't have the time, like I'm not interested in pursuing it, being a weightlifter, being a powerlifter, but it would be interesting to like go to a class or, or be, have private lessons with a guy or a girl, you know, a coach that knows lifts right. and they teach me the mechanics because we all have our friend, you know, Paul is very knowledgeable on this stuff. I trust what Paul says, yeah. you know, but Paul's also not going to micro, like, no, he's, he's yeah. going to correct major mistakes where it's like where you risk injury. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, but he's not going to, you know, he's not going to give me this like thorough breakdown, you know, and and do really nuanced changes like, oh, you need to like open your foot here. Or you need yeah. to, you know, do that. So I think that would be kind of cool because I'm sure like a squat guru could help my squat or a bench guru right. could help my bench. So that's, you know, kind of curious. But again, I'm not trying to push I don't care if I bench 300 pounds. I would be nice to bench 300 pounds, but it's not like, that's not a goal. Like I'd much rather bench 225, stay injury free and be reasonably strong. You know, I'm not trying to push the envelope on the, the number, you right. know what I mean? At the risk of injury. Cause you really do start risking injury when you start redlining, you know? And Paul's very sensitive about that. Paul's very sensitive about, um, lower back. Like not overwhelming your lower back. Yeah, I bet. You know, so you know, yeah, it's it's cool to deadlift, but we've only, you know, I've only deadlifted heavy with him, like heavy, heavy, maybe two or three times in the three months that I've been working out with him. So we do really like um, ration mm. those days to really. I mean, the deadlift it, it taxes your CNS. A well, lot, okay, so I have a question for yeah. you, and I I'm gonna. I, fucking hate doing it but there was a guest on joe rogan uh -huh. this power lifter who who said don't do it right like don't it's deadlift a, nobody should be because deadlifting. it's a uh, robert oberst right i don't know his name he was he's like a power lifter, yeah, he's yeah, a power yeah. lifter. and he's like 
if you go into if you go into any NFL strength and training room, they're doing power cleans and hang cleans, which is like super interesting because like you and I had this discussion the other day about um, like sports specificity, mm-hmm. right? Like, I can see where he's getting at, but like at the same time, that means he believes that the amount of strength development and muscular development from doing deadlifts does not is not worth the risk of doing deadlifts. So that was my understanding is the risk of injury is too high. Is the risk of injury that high? And I think his point was also, unless you are like deadlifting to deadlift, like you're you like you're a power lifter and you need yeah like it's yeah like, like it's a one rep max you're that's, you're that's a requirement for, that's of you. then what you're trying to develop strength wise with a deadlift is too risky and it's better i, I guess he, but he was also saying but like that, have you that, seen the amount of skill it takes to do a power clean though oh i know it's it, i mean like it's it's, 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 more it's way more skill, more skill but right? I, I i think he's also you know, I think the asterisk in there, if you listen to what he said, was he wasn't saying nobody should deadlift, although it's easier to just jump on that extreme position. It was just deadlifting heavy. Like it's better to I'd have hang to re-listen clean to it, and but. power clean, which is at a low, which is going to force you to go at a lower weight, even though the movement is more technical, even though the movement, you know, to some people might look like it's going to lead to more catastrophic injury because yeah. you're swinging this, you know, this yeah, I mean, like just is now, MMA, right? the, like, the bar is moving a much, your jerk, you know, this bar is moving more the, violently. The amount over, of total force. Yeah, is moving violently over a, a exactly four because it's distance over, you know, was it? MA. Yeah, MMA, mass and acceleration, you know. So. It's lower mass, but considerably more acceleration. Yeah. So, like, that's an interesting thing because, like, we just discussed it. Like, but with the deadlift. And he also said that people don't know how to use their upper back when deadlifting. That's like, interesting. Like, there's a skill, th- you know, which I, when he said that, I was like, hmm, that is interesting. Is it, yeah. though? I mean, but, because, like, and, of course, like, I, as, as you know, my jujitsu sort of, like, philosophy about things, my, my weightlifting philosophy is pretty similar and, like, just proper technique above all, right? Yeah. Um. One would think that you should be recruiting everything when you're doing a deadlift if you're learning it properly. So, is that's that's not a that's not a problem with the deadlift. It's a problem with the training of the deadlift. That's the problem with the individual yeah. not being educated enough, right? Oh, to me, at least. Well, that's what's scary about walking into a gym is you see a lot of people, myself probably included, sometimes you know, doing movements that are wrong and, and risking injury or they're flawed in some way. They might not be completely wrong, but someone just opened men's health and they saw the, you know, the workout of the, the week, you know, Thor, how, how Thor got in shape for his role. Yeah. How did Henry Cavill get jacked for Man of Steel? That sort of thing. And they go do that workout. Which that's all bullshit anyway. I mean, like, and they, and they go, they do that workout and they don't really do the movement. They do the movement half right and there's risk of injury or the way the loading is off. And, you know, I mean, Jesus, you know, how many people do you see just, just classic squat where knees are turning inward or the knees are way over yeah. the feet, you know, just because people don't have hip flexibility. They don't have the, the flexibility to actually like do it, sit down and they, they can't do a, they can't fucking squat like your kid with can. no weight. Yeah. Right. They can't even like just squat down. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to sound callous here, but like most people in the third world, when they're playing cards on the street, no, 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 that's exactly they're all just is. squatting down and there's no problem, you know, and kids can squat down. No yeah, problem. I mean, you know? I watch my son do it. Yeah, all the time, and yeah. And then at some point, a lot of people lose that ability. So where do you think that that's an interesting thing too? Because like you, and we have to like, I wonder if <laughs> this is so like off the rails, but like, if you teach jujitsu to people who f- are from the third world, would they learn it m- better than people from like America? Because America comes from the sitting culture, not a squatting culture, and they lack the hip flexibility and stuff. Like, I wonder if that. I'd have to. Uh, no. What do you mean, no? I, I don't think th- I don't think that has any impact on people's ability to learn. The only thing that. 
I think you could suggest is that because if if because hip mobility if, is a huge if, portion of jujitsu. Yeah, but that just means that they they could maybe be able to retain guard a little better. That's all. You're not saying that has nothing to do with learning jujitsu. True. You know, it's like saying like, well, I I'm going to play basketball. You can jump higher than me, but we you know we still have to learn how to play basketball. Yeah, that's right. You know, it could be an advantage, but that's assuming that if you actually took a hundred randomly sampled people from America, as you said, and or just a, a sitting ran- culture, yeah, like, a, sitting, yeah. a sitting culture. And then you take a hundred people that are not from a sitting culture, people that there is in fact a significant difference in terms of people's hip flexibility. You know, if that's true, I'm not going to, I don't know if it's true or not, but if that's true, then I, I what I said originally is, is my point, which is I don't think... They don't learn any different. I don't think yeah. that, that has nothing to do with learning. That's fair. Yeah, maybe they can... I mean, just like going inverted. Like, some people are better going inverted than others, you know? So, yeah. is what it is. So, what's that thing on your shirt? El Diablo Combatives. Okay, so... Um, I've never heard of that. El cool. Diablo Combatives is... Um, so, I met a guy. So, I, I've been through a really weird, like, athletics journey, I guess, in my okay. lifetime. Um, there was a time where I was really into running, like really into running, like running, like, is this when you were shredded? That was when I was super shredded. Yeah. Oh, that was when you, that you and Stacy had that, that photo on the beach when we looked really good. You looked like Ken and Barbie on the beach. Yeah. If they, work, if they worked out, that's where I was like running before I, I was, I would run like a 5k before I would lift weights. So obviously, like I shortchanged my like strength and con- you know and conditioning for in lieu of like You had your like, hair pre-cardio. nice and gelled and spiky. Oh yeah, I was I was super super. You had like, the product. You don't the, have to um, put product in your hair now. Yeah, save ten minutes a day, man. It's awesome. <laughs> but it it cost me about twenty minutes at the end of the week just to do it this. It takes you twenty minutes to to. to I do it by myself, so I'm like I'm trying to make sure that I get every bit. It takes 20 minutes to go over your head and and buzz it. I'm also using like this old crappy pet clipper so like i just i just recently bought like okay. legitimate clippers i'll see if that helps right. with the limit right. I mean, because yeah. the thing about it, right like a clipper is a straight line right yeah your head is not a straight line i know but you typically to me mine i mean because i've done it it's like you just use one hand to keep finding where it's uneven and then you just go over it and you just keep doing that I guess so. I mean, like, so I'm like, or just go, or just go to Phil's place and he'll give you a cool fade. And nah, man, what am I going to drive 40 minutes to, for him to (laughs) cut my hair? But, um, so I was running a lot and, um, I mean, I was like super, I mean, it was after born to run came out and everybody was trying to fucking become an ultra marathoner. And you're wearing, uh, five fingers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I still wear, you know? Like I do it when I walk. I love how you said, like, dude, I, I did that shit before. So. I did. <laughs> I was like one of the first people in Orlando to like buy five fingers. And um, is, is there is there actual like what's the science now? Now looking back, is there actually science that says barefoot running or essentially barefoot? I think running? they actually got sued for that actually because like they made some sort of claim that ba- that like it's like. And of course, it's like very, very like specific. Hunter gatherers did that. <laughs> well, they said like barefoot running is more like natural, like running barefoot. Because you're or, running on, you're not running on your heels. Like I remember the thing was like you should. You're be not running, running on your heels. heels. You're landing you midfoot. Be, so yeah. like the, ideally, actually, you would land on the blade of your foot, rock into the ball of your foot, and then eventually like disperse that through your heel. Yeah. Sp- be able to spring forward. But like I, either way, I went to like a bunch of seminars and stuff, and um, one guy, his name is Jason Robillard. He um he was sort of like a, like a quasi celebrity because he was just very vocal, published a lot of material about it. he's he's um and he was sponsored by Merrill, so he would like travel around the U.S. doing the shoe company that makes yeah, hiking, Mer- hiking yeah. boots. Yeah. They make like hiking I actually boots own a pair of Merrills. They're really good. They make very very just like they and and they were pretty early adopters aside from um, New Balance to the minimalist game when it came to like shoes. Mm-hmm. So he did a a workshop at um at travel country over here in Altamont Springs. And I went out to that and stuff and he and I met and we chatted for a while and we just became like friends over the time. And, um, so he got out of barefoot running as like all trends tend to die. And, uh, just in our conversation and stuff, I not, I didn't convince him necessarily, but like he started doing jujitsu 
and our conversations shifted to that. And he's a brown belt now. Um, he where does he train? Uh, out in Colorado. Cool. Yeah. So he was originally from like Santa, uh, Southern California. Um, got his purple belt out there. Actually had an MMA fight. His wife's had an MMA fight. Um, really, really cool dude. So he moved to Colorado and ended up, uh, I'd have to clarify. Maybe I'll we'll go on the podcast at some point. Um, either buying his, the gym that was where he was training there or so, to something to that effect. But so either way, he now he owns a, a jiu-jitsu slash MMA gym in uh, Colorado. And it's called El Diablo Combative. So shout out to Jason Robillard. What do you know? What what town or city it is? And I'd have to find out, man. Okay. It's a, it's a small town and stuff. And cool. Um, well, he's got a cool logo. Oh, it's awesome, right? Like it's like the little fighting cock. So how did you get the uh, how did you get the shirt? So he he actually he approached me because we've been conversing now for over ten years, um, and he knew like I've always been like one belt above him basically, and he knew that I like taught and that sort of thing. So we've in conversation. He reached out to me. He's like, hey, can you look over my curriculum? Because I bought this gym. I'm a purple belt. He wasn't a brown belt yet. He got awarded as a brown belt shortly after. Was um, he the one of the instructors? What's that? Was, was he one of the instructors at his gym that he just bought? Uh, I think he just started as like a student. Okay. And like ended up like buying it out or something. Cause but when he out. said review the curriculum, was that just a curriculum? Was that like a curriculum that he was going to teach at that point? Or is that a curriculum that the instructor was going to teach? So he's got a really interesting thing. Um... He's, he, his background, he's had a bunch of like crazy ass, like odd jobs being a Merrill, re- traveling Merrill representative mm-hmm. being one of them. Um, he is a, uh, an educator by trade. So he sort of like looked at how jujitsu is taught and kind of approached it differently from a curriculum standpoint. He just wanted me to look over it and see what I thought and that sort of thing. Um, so either way, he and I just correspond on the regular, and and he sent you the. He the sent shirt. me a couple. You, you, I have an El Diablo's combative uh, sticker on the back of my car too. Oh, so. that's awesome! Yeah, man. So uh, I know he and I will be training soon. Hopefully, he doesn't listen to this, but his. So I, 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 I'll just be quiet there. Oh, okay, interesting. So something may be happening towards the end of the year that they may end if up things in, open up. If things they, continue they to open might up. end up in Orlando. Okay, so, you know. Well, that'd be good. Well, Chris, I think my battery is at, is like, okay. Did you have, have you ever followed you? the, um, the Instagram account that makes the cartoons about the UFC? Which one? The one like where it's like super cartoony and super car- like 3d super cartoony. And it's, you know, it's, is it the one Dana like one. where they do like, <laughs> my foot was a balloon. My foot was a balloon. You know that, like they. I don't know what you're talking. You haven't about. seen. I have to show. Anyway, there's a funny one. The, the, one of the one of the the recurring jokes is when people gas in fights, they show the battery icon oh, at really? red. <laughs> pew pew pew. Well, that's basically where I am, dude. Okay. So I'm gonna go hibernate for the next you day sure? and a half. You're not gonna go to the UFC tonight. Or is anybody doing the UFC tonight? Come on, man. I want to watch it. Well, we got to cheer on the I local am, girl am, and the ATT girl. I am... Uh, Who are you rooting for? In the, in the main event? Yeah. I mean, I'm an Amanda Nunes fan. I like her. Obviously, Felicia Spencer's from a local fighter here from Orlando fighting out of the jungle. So that's good for her. Um, I, I think Amanda has it. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, Amanda, mean, I think Amanda's a better I don't want to make a super early judgment. But, but we'll it would see, be nice to see Felicia win. But, but hey, you but know, yeah. uh, if if Felicia won, I that would be that would be they went bigger for her land, than man. it is for Amanda. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Amanda has the accolade, so for her to win, that would be tremendous. But I think uh, we talked about this last call week. Call it now. Too. Call it. Where, 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 what do you got? It. I think uh, I think Amanda with a rear naked choke in the, I think in the first. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna call Amanda TKO in the second. Yeah, I was thinking second. second. I was thinking second, but I, I, it depends on how how she fights. If she comes out aggressive, she might just want to feel her out. In which yeah. case, maybe second. So I think say. So if I wanted to be safer, I'd say first or second round, uh, rear naked choke, and that's the result of she gets her to turtle, and it's just yeah, like she's just, she just yeah. Her, yeah. So that's I'm gonna what. call. I'm gonna call TKO via mount to ground and pound late in the second. Okay. So we'll see. 
We'll, we'll put a beer on In that. either case, you know, good luck to those ladies. And, uh, oh, one other interesting thing. The NBA is going to be playing all their games in Orlando. That's awesome. At and, Disney, right? And, and I actually had a conversation with one of my buddies, actually my, my tennis coach. He lived in Hawaii, and the, we were joking. It's like, yeah, because Florida is one of the few states that's opened up and having sporting events, everything's going to be here. And I was joking, like, yeah, man, all the NFL teams are going to come down here. It's going to be like the Naples, you know, it's like all the teams, like the, the um, you know, the Seattle Seahawks I mean, are going to become the, the Sarasota that, right? Seahawks, like, right? They're yeah. going to turn this out. And, and I was just joking like that. And then the news came out, what, yesterday that, or the day before, I saw it at least, that they're going to be fucking playing on Disney, I think, at the Wild World of Sport or yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. in there. And, and so, like, that's and the thing, actually right? have And actually have some spectators. And have some spectators like, and, like, house all of the, the athletes in their facility. I mean, like, what a, what a smart way of, like, rebranding yourself, right? Well, I know, like, but how crazy is it that all this stuff's happening in Orlando? Like we for, got the, so we got selfishly, the infrastructure for it, right? so selfishly awesome. as a guy who resides here, it's like, well, something stuff, cool stuff's happening in Orlando. That's kind of cool. Yeah, you know? take that, Jacksonville. Fuck you all. <laughs> Orlando's cooler. And on that, we will catch you down the road. Yeah, fuck off, Jacksonville. <laughs>